The last minute change in the landing runway brought an aircraft above the hilly terrain. Sink rate. Sink rate. The crew were unable to see the ground due to the foggy weather. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Twenty four November two thousand one Berlin Tegel Airport, Germany. An aircraft just landed in Berlin Tegel Airport. The passengers from Zurich left the aircraft and the catering was carried on the outward flight. The refueling did not take place here because the aircraft still had 5,650 kg of fuel remaining. The required fuel for the return flight was 4,893 kg. Flight 3597 was then ready for its scheduled flight to Zurich, Switzerland. 28 passengers and 23 pieces of luggage were checked in for flight. The booking was done by 49 passengers, but 21 of them did not able to show up. Among the five crew members was Captain Hans Ulrich Lewis, 57. Lewis was an extremely experienced pilot with more than 90,500 flight towers. The co-pilot was Stefan Loherer, 25. He had an experience of just 490 flight towers. The flight departed Berlin Tegel Airport with 28 passengers and 5 crew members for its 1 hour 10 minutes of journey to Zurich, Switzerland. ATC cleared the flight to climb 16,000 feet and subsequently to 27,000 feet. Between 9.20 and 9.36, the crew received the ATIS service message Kilo which showed the possibility of an ILS approach on runway 14. The aircraft was close to its destination airport. ATC cleared the flight for a descent to flight level 240. While descending, the captain described to the co-pilot how the approach has to be executed on ILS runway 14. During this approach briefing, the co-pilot tried to get the captain's attention of having an increased speed leading into the possible overspeed. The ATIS transmission changed to the code letter Lima, containing the change of landing runway 28 VOR DME standard approach. Flight 3597 was behind schedule and would not reach Zurich until 10 o'clock. That forced the flight to change its landing plan. There was a new Swiss law. 
was designed to reduce airport noise from approaching aircraft over southern Germany in the late evening hours. So ATC must redirect all flights on the final approach to switch from the ILS-equipped runway 14 to the less accurate VORDME-equipped runway 28. The crew made contact with Zurich ATC and continued their descent to flight level 160 as instructed by them. At that moment, the flight crew was instructed to reduce speed to 240 knots. Shortly afterwards, flight 3597 was instructed to fly onto waypoint Rilax for a holding. While flying in the holding pattern, the captain gave an approach briefing for non-precision approach to runway 28. According to the captain, they will leave 4000 feet at 8 miles. 3360 feet at 6 miles and the new minimum will be 2390 feet. The co-pilot confirmed the procedure. The crew received clearance for the standard VOR DME approach 28. The aircraft was 11 nautical miles to the east of the airport. During the right turn, the captain mentioned to the co-pilot that he had visual ground contact. An Embraer 145, operated by Cross Air, landed on runway 28. The crew of that flight mentioned the weather as pretty minimum and they had runway in sight about 2.2 nautical miles distance away. The captain of flight 3597 also heard this information. The captain set the speed as 160 knots and put the Sink aircraft rate. in steep descent with a rate of 1000 feet per minute, which was later increased to 1200 feet per minute. As the aircraft approached the minimum descent altitude, the captain mentioned that he had noted this and explained that he had certain visual ground contact. Sink rate. Sink rate. The Sink aircraft rate. reached the minimum descent Sink altitude rate. of 2390 Sink feet rate. and the captain stated that he had ground contact and they are continuing the descent. Sink rate. Sink rate. Three hundred. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Cool up. Sink rate. Cool up. Sink rate. Cool up. Sink rate. Cool up. The aircraft hit the crown of a tree, then impacted approximately 200 meters further downhill. Out of 33 people, 24 perished. The investigators were surprised when they checked the history of Captain Liu. The captain had bad reputation in his piloting career. 
in February 21, 1990, the landing gear of Sub 340A was erroneously retracted while the aircraft was on the ground during a training session. Lewis was the training captain. He tried to upgrade his flight certifications to McDonnell Douglas MD-80 in January 1996 and another attempt in June of the same year. However, he was not able to succeed and the instructor noted that Lewis inefficiently used the flight guidance system of MD-80. In 1999, he chartered a Sub 340 from Cross Air for a sightseeing with paying passengers on board. The program was to land at Sion in Switzerland, then return to Zurich. The co-pilot announced that he had lost communication with the ATC. The captain proceeded with the approach, but when he saw the road signs shortly before landing, he realized that he was actually about to land at Italy's Aosta Airport, which is situated in an alpine valley parallel to Sion. In June 2001, he successfully passed the type rating check for an Ebro RG100. At the time of the accident, he had logged just 287 hours in the Ebro RG100. The investigation was done by BFU Switzerland. According to the investigators, the main cause of the accident was that the captain, as the pilot flying, led the aircraft to descend below minimum descent altitude in poor visibility. They also stated that the co-pilot did nothing to prevent the continuation of the aircraft below minimum descent altitude. The investigators also mentioned that the range of hills where the plane crashed was not marked in the Jefferson approach chart. The approach to the runway 28 was not equipped with a minimum safe altitude warning system. Aside from that, the visual minimums during the time of the accident were actually inappropriate. This is all for now. Click here to subscribe our channel so that you won't miss our new video. Please share your thoughts about the video in the comment section. Give a thumbs up if you are watching until now and don't forget to share. I will see you in the next video. This is Sunil saying thank you for watching.